So for this type of question, since it's asking about average, we're going to use the formula for average, which is you add up all the scores and divide by how many scores there were. So since it's talking about three tests, you're going to add up the two scores, 74 plus 62 plus the third test we don't know yet. And we'll divide by three because that's how you would find the average of three things. We want the average to equal 70%. So to solve, you just have to multiply by three. It's like cross multiplying. 74 plus 62 plus X equals 210. 74 plus 62 is 136. So to solve for x, we're going to subtract 136. And we end up with x equals So for this problem, I would start by drawing a rectangle. It says that the perimeter is 40 and the area is 75 for the final dimension. So if we call the dimensions X and Y, then our perimeter will be x plus x, which is 2x. And y plus y, which is 2y. That's our perimeter, which equals 40. And for area, you would multiply length times width, so x times y. And the area equals 75. So we need to solve this by substitution. So if we solve the top equation here for y, our first step would be to move the 2x so we get 2y equals 40 minus 2x. Divide everything by 2. We get y equals 20 minus x. And we're going to take the 20 minus x, plug it into the other equation, which I have in green, in place of the y. So it would be x times 20 minus x equals 75. Solve that out. So we're going to distribute. It's 20x minus x squared equals 75. Since that's a quadratic, we want to get everything on one side. So x squared negative x squared plus 20x minus 75 to the other side equals 0. We don't want negative x squared, so we're going to change all of our signs. And we'll 
solve that equation. x squared minus 20x plus 75 equals 0. In order to solve that, we can try factoring. We need to find two numbers that would multiply to be 25 or multiply to be 75 and add to be negative 20. That would be 15 times 5. And if they're both negative, we would get the negative 20. So our factors are x minus 5 and x minus 15. So solving each of those, we get x equals 5 and x equals 15. And you'll notice that these two numbers work, even though there are two answers for x. Um, if we plug those in, we would just get that y would have to equal the other number. So 5 and 15 are the two numbers that work for multiplying to be 75 for area. And 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 15 is 30. 10 plus 30 is 40, no matter which way you plug those in. So the dimensions are... 5 feet by 15 feet. For the next one, sum of two numbers is 8, and the sum of their squares is 34. So let's call our two numbers x and y. And when we add them, x plus y, we get 8. When we multiply them, or no, when we add the sum of their squares, so that's x squared plus y squared, the answer is 34. So we can also solve this by substitution. We solve this top equation for y, we get y equals 8 minus x, and we'll plug that into the second equation. So that would look like x squared plus 8 minus x squared equals 34. To solve this, we need to foil out the 8 minus x, so that's 8 minus x times itself since it's squared. So 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times a negative x is negative 8x. Negative x times 8 is negative 8x again. And then negative x times negative x is negative, no, negative times negative is positive x squared. Plus the x squared we already had and still equals 34. So we want to combine all of our like terms. So we'll combine our x squared. That's 2x squared. Combine our x's. Negative 8, negative 8, that's negative 16x. And we will subtract the 34 over because we want it to be equal to 0. And combine those. 64 minus 34 is 30. And now that's equal to 0. Since there's a GCF, we're going to factor out the 2. We get x squared minus 8x plus 15. And then we can just factor the x squared minus 8x plus 15. So that means we are looking for two numbers that multiply to be 15, add to be negative 8. So multiply to be 15, that's 3 times 5. 
make it be a negative eight or be negative three and negative five. So our factors would be x minus three and x minus five. So we can key it up to solve. So we get x minus three equals zero. That means x equals three. And x minus five equals zero means x equals five. So you will also notice that just like in the last example, our two answers that we got for x is the two answers for our two numbers. It doesn't matter about the x and the y in this case. Um, 3 plus 5 is 8, and then 3 squared will be 9, 5 squared is 25. Add those together to get 24. So our two numbers are 3 and 5. So this is a simple interest problem. The formula for simple interest is interest equals principal times rate times time. So 10,000, the initial investment, that's our principal. The annual rate of 9%, that's the rate. And then there are two different accounts here. So the 4,000 is the principal in our other account, and the 11 is our rate for the other account. How much interest will you earn at the end of five years? So five years tells us time for both accounts. So we're going to have two equations, we'll have to add the interest together. So first we have 10,000 for the principal. The rate was 9%, so that's 0 0.09. And then time was five years. For our other account, the principal was 4,000. The rate was 11%, so that's 0 0.11. And the time is also five years. So when we multiply those out, we get 10,000 times 0 0.09 times 5 is 4,500. And 4,000 times 0 0.11 times 5 is 2,200. So those are the two amounts of interest that we earned, but it wants to know the total. So we'll add those together. The total interest earned in that five years is So number 33, this is another interest question. But now it's asking how many years will it take for the balances of the two accounts to equal a total amount. So we do have two different accounts going again, two different interest rates and two different amounts for principal. So to set this up, in your first account, we have our interest equals principal times rate times time. So we'll call this interest one. And you'll see why in a little while. Our principal is $600. Our rate is 
six percent, so point zero six. And then the time, that's what it's actually asking for, is how many years. So time is going to be a variable t. And that's what we're going to solve for. How many years? And that'll be our variable t. For our other account, we have $800 that earns 8%. So for account 2, we'll call that interest from account 2, I sub 2. We have the principal of $800, the rate of 0.088%, and then time, it's the same amount of time because they're invested for the same amount of time. So when it talks about the total amount of $2,300, our total amount of $2,300, that will be our sum of the amounts that we initially invested, because that money just grows, plus our two interest rates, the amount that we earn from interest. So we can simplify this a little bit to actually multiply out the 600 times 0 0.06. T. And from the other account, eight hundred times point zero eight, that's sixty four T. Now we have an equation that we can solve for t. The total amount equals the initial investment plus both of our interests. So solving this account, 600 plus 800 plus 1,400. 36 plus 64, that's 100 t equals 2300. So subtract the 1400 from both sides, 1400. So we get 900 equals 100 T divide by 100 and we get T equals 9. Remember T was how many years, so it's going to take 9 years for our total account balance to be $2,300. So, for this question here, this is a um, percent of a solution, or in this case, it's an alloy. But they're all set up the same. We always are adding two different percentages to try to equal a new percent. So our total will be our new. So we're going to add up our two different percentages to equal our new percent. So our new percent in this case is 11.2, which is 0.112. The percent of our first two alloys, we have a 12%, so that's 0.12, and we have a 9%, 0 0.09. So I always start just by writing the percentages across the top as decimals. And then we want to know how much of each we have. So the 12% it's asking for how many pounds of that will we be adding, so we can call that X. So that's what we're solving for, how many pounds. And we start with 1,000 pounds of the 9%, so that's 1,000 pounds. And if we're putting that all together, we're getting a new alloy. 
that's going to be 1,000 plus X. However many pounds we add, that's how much we're going to have. So the total amount of that alloy is 1,000 plus X. So this right here, our buckets, give us the equation. 0.12X plus 0 0.09 times 1,000 is 90. 0.112 times, we have to distribute this. This would look like 112 times 1,000 plus X. So when we distribute the 0.112, that's 112 plus 0.112 times x. So now we have an equation we just need to solve for x. So we'll subtract the 0.112 from both sides. So that's 0 0.008. X. and subtract 90 from both sides. That's 22. So divide by 0 0.008. Twenty two divided by point zero zero eight gives us x equals two thousand seven hundred fifty. And remember that answered hit the question how many pounds? So that's two thousand seven hundred fifty pounds of the twelve percent alloy. So this is another percent solution question. We're going to set it up very similar. We're going to be adding a 76% solution with a pure water solution. So that would be like 0% solution. Trying to make a 57% solution. So we have a 76% solution plus a 0% solution to make a 57% solution. And we'll put it back in our buckets. Now it's asking how many fluid ounces of the 76, so that's X, mixed with one fluid ounce of the pure water, so 0% solution. And we're getting a 57% solution, the total amount of ounces that we will have will be 1 plus X. So we get our equation here just like last time. It's 0 0.76 times X plus 1 times 0, which is 0, equals 0 0.57 times 1 plus X. So we'll distribute that out. That's 0 0.57 plus 0.57x equals 0.76x. So if we subtract 0.57x from both sides, we get 0.19x equals 0. 7. And then divide by 0.19, we get x equals 3. And going back to our original question, x was how many ounces of the saline solution? So that's 3 ounces of the saline solution.